less likes to spotlight as well. Uh, I don't know. You, you know, don't care. Don't talk about my pigment, please. It's you know, I'm self conscious about my pigment. But Angela Alioto, you embody the San Francisco spirit. We got you back. Got you back. Yo, good call on that one. Uh, who we got next? Aaron Peskin. Uh, get a close up of Aaron Peskin there. Let me do my my best Aaron Peskin impersonation. Okay, uh, Aaron Peskin is actually, you know, he's a reasonable guy. I like Aaron Peskin. He's a short dude, and he's always down to drink a little. What does being short and drinking a little have anything to do with what we're talking about whatsoever? John, if you know me, you know being short and drinking a little. Well, actually, just one of them actually is very dear and important to me. I like to drink a little. Uh, but um, Aaron Peskin... I'll give you an example about uh, about how uh, reasonable Aaron Peskin is. He hates big big box chain stores. He outlawed them on Columbus Avenue, uh, and Home Depot wanted to move in to the Bernal Heights area corridor, uh, Hunters Bayview, Hunters Point, Bernal Heights area where they all meet. And he was the deciding vote. And he absolutely hates chain stores, but he listened to the people of the neighborhood, and they wanted it tenfold. And even though he said he doesn't like big box chain stores, he has to side with the people that live in that community. That is a politician who uh, is representing the people well, not only in his district, but all districts. He does what they want him to do. And that's all we ask for our elected officials. So uh, even though he's in bed literally and figuratively with the Telegraph Hill Dweller Association, it's this... Uh, kind of radical, you know, radical borderline communist group that sits on top of Telegraph Hill and dictates through threatening manners what can and can't happen in District 3 and along Columbus Avenue and in North Beach. I thoroughly believe that Aaron Peskin listens to people and he does what, what's right for the community, the neighborhood and the city. And he maintains the fabric and identity of our city. So, Aaron Peskin, my friend, taking back the city, got your back. All right, yo, good call on Aaron Peskin. Who we got next? Chris Daly, very controversial supervisor here in San Francisco. Uh... Chris Daly, my friend, gotta do it. You're hella whack. Whoa, 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 I gotta stop you right there. Why a hella whack on Chris Daly? Uh, Chris Daly went to Duke University. I'm a Tar Heel guy. So just because as a Tar Heel basketball college fan uh, and you hate Duke so much, you're gonna put a hella whack next to the guy that does the most for people that rent the working class, the people living with HIV and AIDS, the people that the person that does the most for the homeless, and the not to mention the guy that leads the opposition to our mayor. Uh, and on top of all that, he's mentioned as your hero on your MySpace page. Okay, okay, John, you got me. Relax. Does that make you happy? <laughs> I can't, I can't, you know, jump off the Tar Heel shit, man. I, I'm, I'm a Tar Heel fan. Okay, Mr. Tar Heel fan, um, if you're going to ride with your Tar Heels that much to the point where you hate Duke that much, um, we're just going to have to agree to disagree on this one. I like my Tar Heel basketball. What could I say? Okay, Mr. Tar Heel basketball, who we got next there? <laughs> All right, Carmen Policy, you might be watching this right now and you might be like, what the hell is Carmen Policy doing on a political San Francisco board? And I'll tell you why. Uh, Carmen Policy has been rumored by many uh, as one of the few candidates to run for mayor in the next election. And if, if I know a lot of you haven't lived in the city a long time. Uh, 
But real San Francisco natives and people that grew up here know that Carmen Policy was the GM of the San Francisco 49ers when they were actually a winning team. And we knew how special that was to have a winning team here in San Francisco. And even though he would be the big downtown, big business mayor, and they would probably push for him to be the mayor, I genuinely think, and when you hear him talk and speak, I think he's a good guy. He's not like some of our other mayors over here. Over here. He's not like any of them. I think he's actually more of a listener, and I think he would do the right thing. And perhaps, perhaps uh, he could lead the way to us having better sports teams representing San Francisco. So, for that reason... <laughs> Carmen Policy, my friend. Oh, and not only that, but he took me a $20 bill when he, I let him park in the white zone at the hotel I work at. So, thank you again. So, you're going to get this guy's back because he tipped you a $20 bill at your job. Uh, number one, I seen you work. I seen you work. You do a phenomenal job. So you deserve those $20 tips. Uh, so what's the real reason why uh, you have his back? No, it's not that. It's all the other reasons I just said. Uh, Carmen Policy, we got your back. Who we got next? Next, of course, here we have Michaela Alioto. Uh, Michaela Alioto Pierre, uh, she's a supervisor. Um, Here's the thing with Michaela Alioto and me. I uh, first, you know, I was torn by this uh, because, you know, she has a very similar last name to me. I never met her, never met her. Uh, here's the thing with Michaela, though, that uh, she voted on a proposition to help the Academy of Art. In one of my last previous shows, one of the dear issues to me was the Academy of Art and how they're gentrifying the whole San Francisco buying up property, evicting tenants, uh, charging up rent, a fraudulent, a fraudulent uh, art institute. Um, and the people out there that went to the Academy of Art, they know what I'm talking about. It's a whack-ass school. Didn't even have art credentials. And she's just a political machine, the lady that uh, actually runs it. So, Michaela Alioto, you're hella whack. Okay, Mr. I Hate the Art Academy, uh, who we got next? Oh, and here we go, next. Uh, very vibrant girl we met in the bar uh, about some time ago. She's all over my intro. Uh, we are going to have to say... We love your rack. Wait a minute. What the hell does this have to do with anything we've been talking about for the last 10 to 15 minutes? Nothing. 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 Yeah, no, no, I just, I like a rack. What can I say? I'm sorry. You need serious help. Moving right along here, uh, arguably, arguably, the most powerful guy in uh, journalism news today. Uh, he actually runs Taking Back the City, the show that celebrates the unique character and soul of the place we all call home, San Francisco. Um, he's very cool guy. Uh, ladies, very single guy. And, um, dude, I gotta stop you right there. You're an idiot. Look closely. That's you. You know what? You're, you're, that is me. Um, okay, so this is a tough one. I can't really call this one. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna go ahead and say that taking back the city is biased on this guy, arguably one of the most powerful guys in news journalism uh, here today in San Francisco. So we're, we're gonna take our cameras out to the streets. Uh, people of San Francisco, how do you feel about this guy? What am I supposed to say? Your name and you got my back. My name is Alfredo. 
And I got John 